I've spent the last three weeks learning Unity netcode for game objects to make my very first multiplayer game. The game is completely free, so stay tuned to find out how you can play it as well. If you're on this channel for quite some time now, you might know that it's been pretty long since my last released game, and that's because I keep quitting projects, mainly because of the scope creep. I continue picking projects that are way too difficult, where way too time consuming and then I just lose the interest and drop the projects. And this time I almost fell in the same pit hole. I always wanted to learn multiplayer so I decided to start on a smaller project first and then move to bigger projects and expand my knowledge in the field. That's how I initially started working on a physics based game and I soon realized that multiplayer is much much more complicated than I initially anticipated. Especially stuff like physics and movement synchronization that involves physics. Oh, that was way more difficult than I imagined. Especially for a person that didn't have any knowledge in multiplayer or networking at all. After struggling with this project for a few days, I understood that the scope is a little bit too big, so I need to reduce it once again. And that's how I started to make an even smaller project to understand all the basics and fundamentals of multiplayer. So I decided to make a snake game for two players, where they will compete with each other. Later, this project proved to be a challenge by itself, so it was very good that I decided to stick with this game instead. The main idea will be to eat food pellets as in a regular snake game, however it will be two players on the map, and if one bumps into the other or bumps into a wall, that player will lose and the other one wins. So that will be the whole premise of the game. Kinda like a mix of snake and slither IO. I started by drawing some very simple assets that are going to be used in the game. I didn't need too many of them. I needed a snake head, a snake body, a tile sprite, and a food pellet. That's basically it. I made all the sprites white so I can control the colors from within the game. This way I can have different colors for the player 1 and player 2 while still using only one sprite asset. I did not know which map size is good, which map size is bad, which will be the most comfortable, so I decided to make a dynamic system where you use a width and height parameter and it just generates the map based on that, and then I would just pick the one that I like the most. And to make the system prettier, I made it so the tiles appear one by one instead of all the map appearing at once, and I added some funny sounds when the tiles appear. By the way, all the sounds within the game are homemade. That alone makes this game feel even more special to me. Once I was pleased with the result, it was time to make it so the map spawning is synchronized between the host and the client, so time for multiplayer. I'm not gonna get into details explaining the whole process, but a very useful tutorial I found is from TaroDev. I highly recommend watching it if you're also interested in starting a multiplayer project. I'll leave the link in the description down below. Once that was working, I made it so the foot tiles are spawned every time I press the spacebar and once again I synchronized that through the local network using netcode for game objects. So you can see that the foot tile appears both on the client side and on the server side. Later I made that the player also can spawn on both client and server. That's quite simple, so time to make the players move and eat the foot pellets. This part took me actually a little longer, especially the synchronization, because all the logic is on the server side. The main reason for that is so the client can't manipulate and lie to the server by telling it a fake position or a fake result. So all the important logic is happening on the server side, and then that information is retranslated to the client. So the client is basically reading the information from the server. Great, we have some basic snake mechanics, so let's make the game prettier. I chose a nice color palette, I reworked the assets a little bit, and here is the result. Personally, I love it, and the colors look really well together, so I think that's nice. The very next thing I did was make the snake's body grow when eating food pellets, and then making the body follow the head. I think you might be curious how exactly the growth and movement mechanics work, so here is the how. It is basically a node system where each body tile is a node. So there is this class called body tile which stores some information about itself, such as a boolean value, whether it's the root, the tail or just a regular node. Root is considered the first node in the tree, while tail is the very last one, and the regular node is any node between root and tail. Also, this class stores the current position of this tile and its previous position. 
Lastly, in case the tile is not the tail, so it's not the last one, it will store reference to the next body tile. Now, whenever the snake eats a pellet, I simply add a new body tile to the previous position of our tail, and I set the new tile to be the new snake's tail. In order to move the snake, I change the current position of snake's head, aka the root node, according to the movement direction. And then I just set every next body tile to the previous position of its parent tile. This results in the correct snake behavior we are all familiar with. Of course it didn't work from the first time, but soon after I got it working. However, the issue is that nothing really happens whenever you bump into something or the enemy, so I think it's time to add an endgame scene and make it so the player loses the game whenever it bumps into something. I didn't want to have the endgame menu bland and boring, so, so I used hinge joints in order to make this wobbly snake, and later I'll make it so it takes the color of the winning player. I added some text and made it so when you hit something you actually lose the game and it sends you to this end game screen that we just made. Then I quickly made the main menu with some nice graphics and animations so it feels more polished. And when you click play you'll get three options. The reason why we have three options is because I wanted to give the players the option to either play with strangers by having a quick game or to actually play with some friends by hosting a game and sharing the lobby code with each other. I've also added some other small mechanics that make the game feel more polished and nice, like loading animations, scene fading, this button that brings you on my YouTube channel, and some funny text at the end game menu that makes fun of your pee, -pee size. One pretty essential element for multiplayer games are player nicknames. I've created a system so that you can set your own nicknames, but in case you don't want to bother with that, there is a default set of nicknames that you can get assigned when you join the game for the first time. I've asked you on Discord to leave some suggestions for these default names and... <laughs> yeah, I don't regret doing this at all. <clears throat> Yeah, well, if you want your dumb ideas to be in my future projects, make sure to check out the Discord channel. Also, there you can find people to play Snack MP with. By the way, congrats to Phantom Sept for finding a way to exploit AIDS. <laughs> yes, I said it on purpose. And congrats with becoming the new Village Drifter. Alright, back to the Snake game. I finished and polished everything else and the final result is looking quite good and to be frank, it's quite fun to play. Compared to a regular snake game where the main idea is to eat as many food tiles as possible, here you can actually win the game even if your snake is smaller than the opponent, similar to Slither.io. The main idea here is to be the last man standing. Being larger than your opponent definitely helps, but it's not mandatory, since if you're agile enough, you can make it so the opponent bumps into you and loses the game. While waiting for my Steam publisher account to be approved, I've implemented other jokes, easter eggs and hahas, but you'll have to play the game to actually find them. Talking about the wolf, the game is released on Steam and that's the main reason this video took so long. Apparently getting your dev account approved on Steam takes quite some time, about 5 times longer than it took me to actually make this game. I hope you will enjoy Snack MP as well as this video, if so leave a like, it takes less than a second but substantially helps the channel grow. That being said, I feel much more confident in starting the physics based game I initially planned, so stay tuned for my next project. Bye! Yo. Bro, is that like just a bootleg slider, yo?